Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds, a family focus program today requested from YouTube about the doves. And well, we're going to learn today that doves and pigeons are very, very closely related and the names have been interchanged over the years. So uh, the dove group or the dove and pigeon group, if you will. So there are many members in North America. There are some that are really pretty obscure. We're going to talk about those, but we're going to start, start, of course, with the one that is most famous to most of us, and that is the morning dove. Oh, uh, one of the most popular birds uh, in North America. It is a symbol of peace for uh, a lot of people. It is uh, a, a source of comfort with their soothing call to to people. Um, and of course, it is a game bird as well. It's, it's the most wide ranging game bird that we have. But the the morning doves are uh, you know pretty typical of the entire dove family. There's some th things that are very very unique about them. Um, when you watch birds feed at your bird feed or, or at your and drink at your bird bath you'll notice that most birds dip into the water and tilt their head back so that the water runs down their throats. Gravity has to pull the water down. And a lot of people think that, like, especially hummingbirds, they can suck like a straw with that long, thin bill. That is not true at all. The pigeon group can do that. They can actually just stick their bill in the water and they can actually suction the, and, and, the, and the water draws up into their bill and they don't have to do the head tilt back thing. So that's very unique in the dove group. Um, they, the doves will do, do eat some insects, but primarily they are uh, in the seed eaters and eat, we call them the vacuum cleaners of the bird world. Uh, it is crazy how many seeds they eat. One statistic from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology said that morning doves eat 12 to 20% in their, of their, their body weight a day in bird seed. And, you know, they have, uh, they have crops where they crawl, depending upon where you're from, uh, a little storage uh, in their esophagus. And some have actually uh, larger two-chambered ones as well. And they eat and store the uh, seeds there for later digestion. And of course, they eat, pick up sand and grit, and that helps them to grind that uh, that seed down in their gizzard. So uh, they are built for seed eating, and, that's, and they really eat a lot of them. But they also lay a lot of eggs. Uh, we've talked about morning doves. We've seen more morning dove programs about how poor nesters they are. They don't build very sophisticated nests, very simple. Uh, now, if they're smart enough to build their nest in a thick evergreen tree, they've got a lot of support from, from those limbs and leaves and uh, needles there. But in some some bushes, I've seen them lay there. Like we joke about there being four sticks laid across the limb to be a morning dove nest. So, But they have lots of babies. And they, uh, they, I've seen... Uh, statistics of six, seven nests in a season. So they do nest frequently. So uh, morning doves are, I didn't even put a map with morning doves on uh, the screen because my goodness, they uh, range pretty much all the way across the continent and well up into Canada. So the morning dove is a very, very widespread species, by far the most widespread species for the United States that we're going to talk about today. So, but another thing that people love about them, of course, is their song. And I'm going to play their song from the uh, Sibley's app to birds. Uh, and, and all the songs I'm going to play today are from that. But there's two things I'm going to play. One is going to first is going to be that mournful song where they get their name. Remember, they are morning doves, M-O-U-R-N. So for sad sound, not time of day. And of course, people always ask about the wing whistle. So let's listen to this. So you hear that. Was there a classic call? And I always talk about it being a, the sound of a, a lazy summer afternoon to me. But that wing whistle gets a lot of attention. I get a lot of questions of, you know, what makes that wing whistle? Well, they uh, they believe it's because of a notch in 
uh, their seventh primary feather that, that when they take off, the winds passing through that notch makes that whistling sound. So, and it can be a distraction, you know, because they're very slow at taking off and predator, they get caught by predators a lot, but they think, you know, hopefully that whistling sound will throw off a, a would be predator just trying to keep catch them. So uh, they're a fascinating bird. Uh, they, like I said, one of the most widespread birds uh, in, in, in North America, and they are very, very popular. When we do the uh, most popular birds list, Morning does always come up on that. And a bird that that looks a lot like it size-wise and everything, but is kind of the, it, it, the southern uh, species. It, it, it's the white wing dove. And this picture was taken by a friend of mine who lives here in Kansas City. It showed up at her feeder and uh, at like 2007, something like that. It was, and we see that happen here in the Midwest. And you see that range map up there and you see that they are very much a Southern species and the desert species for the most part, all through the desert Southwest and down, of course, all through Mexico and that area. But they have for years uh, after the nesting season, so they wander. And they show up and they've been recorded in Alaska and they've been recorded in Maine. They've been recorded um, uh, all throughout the U.S. Uh, but they do look enough alike the morning dove, which is so common that some people don't even recognize that they have a different species. The color is the same, the shape is the same, but you can see that white broad band on the wing, the forewing there, and you can see the white wing when they fly. Uh, but you guys who live in their region, you, there, there are lots of them. They're very common at feeders. Um, as a matter of fact, they're, uh, you know, we sell a lot of the dove cages to keep birds out of uh, the dove out of bird feeders. And, and, and white winged doves are one of the most uh, famous culprits for that. They will take over a bird feeder and be, they are, they'll eat anything. We, like I said, we call them the vacuum cleaners. They'll, they'll eat any seed there and, and really, uh, uh, put a dent in your bird feeding budget. So if you have that kind of problem, dove cages, you know, allow cardinals and things into your feeders, but keep the dove out. So uh, short perches on your feeders, that kind of thing too, work for them. But uh, dove are very, very popular. The white winged doves are uh, just a, a pretty beautiful bird. And they do show up here in Kansas City every so often. So, and they're, I, it, it calls, uh Stevie Nicks made that uh, famous in her song, The Edge of Seventeen. Uh, years ago, she was saying, and and I read later that she really had never seen a white winged dove or knew what they were uh, until well after that song, and, and it became popular. But uh, what does she say in the song? Sings a song, sounds like she's singing, "Ooh, baby, ooh." Let's see what they sound like. And having done a lot of bird watching in Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Southern California, all that range in, in, in my life, I have heard that bird a lot. Uh, they, and if you live down there, you know that song because that they do sing an awful lot. So that was the song of the white winged dove. And this, uh, for the conversation today, these are our medium-sized doves that we're going to talk about. Uh, and now I'm going to switch to the small doves. And when I mean small, I mean small. This dove, this common ground dove, and you see it, say, again, southern uh, range in Florida, across the southern half of the southern states and, and the southwest, this dove is the size of a song sparrow. It is small. And I know it's deceptive when you're looking at it in a picture. You don't really see that. But these guys are or, you know, they're that big. Now, they're small, uh, and it throws people off when they see it. And they got, and people who do see them, their first instinct is it's a baby dove, and it's a baby morning dove, but it's not. That is a full grown dove. Uh, and they are really, really uh, unique birds. And, and uh, they kind of have a little bit of a scalloped look to them. And they walk around and they bob their head like doves and things. And uh, they, they occur all through the, uh, the Southeast. I know. Uh, Friend of, a birding friend of mine had one at a feeder up here one winter in Kansas City. So again, it, these uh, it all you know birds will want will wander. I mean, at some time, and they can and, and they turn up in the darndest places. And she was very alert that uh, it wasn't just a sparrow out there. This was it was a dove that long tail. Um, but the the common ground dove, it's uh you know in that area, and 
Let's see. I will play the common ground dove call. That was that just that repetitive and almost like a backup gear you know, on a on a, a truck or something like that. I'm sorry I skipped over that. Um, the Inca dove, another of the tiny doves. This is um, a, a, not much bigger than the common ground dove. And you can see from the range map all across those southern areas. Inca doves are truly a desert dove. They're a dry country dove. Um, and they have a very scalloped look to them. And I know one of our uh, uh, YouTube watchers has one that, that showed up at her feeders up in Arkansas out of its range this year. So those desert southwest birds, and, and not just in the dove species, but, you know, with uh, thing, climate change, whenever with these conditions changing, there are birds that are moving north and, and expanding their ranges north. And, and Inca doves may be one of those that we see more commonly uh, you know, like in Missouri in just a few years. But uh, one of the things that I read about Inca doves is that they do not deal with cold very well. So I, they probably won't expand too far north. And that they're famous for building Inca dove pyramids when it's cold. Uh, like temperatures get down in the 20s at night and they will stack on top of each other and build a pyramid uh, that, that can serve body heat, which is really cool. But Again, that uh, you know, like all the dove, they they're tremendous seed eaters. Uh, they do not feed their babies insects. They regurgitate uh, pigeon milk. They create and, and and feed that to their babies, like all the group members of this group. Um, the Inca doves are just a cute little bird down there in the desert southwest. Uh, the uh, another one that's even more extreme in the south, deep south, is the white tip dove. And that's down really along the Rio Grande Valley uh, at, at, at the tip down there. I've only seen it uh, in bird watching down there in some of the parks right along the river. So just a, um, it's, your, it's a very unique bird. Uh, these bright red legs is one of the things that really stands out about it. Uh, walks around just like a little bit. It's a little larger than the ground doves, but it's smaller than the morning doves and the white wing doves. So the white tip doves, if you live way down there in that part of the world, and another one, a bird that occur, occurs occasionally down in uh, New Mexico, Arizona, and, and southern uh, Texas is the ruddy ground dove. Uh, again, another tiny bird, but the beautiful Rufus. Ruth took this a couple of weeks ago down in Panama, but it is that it's a very, very small dove. I, they were they were plentiful in Cozumel when I was bird watching down there. But you guys in the southern states, if you look out there. In your yard, with especially with the, the uh, common ground doves, you see this one that's really, really rufous like this. You may have a, 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 a ruddy ground dove, beautiful bird. But now we're going to switch from the little guys to the big guys. Uh, so we go from the little tiny sparrow sized dove up to the larger dove, and, and the one that has really taken over <laughs> or uh, become super prolific. I want you to you know, look at this map and look down at the southern tip of Florida and realize that there was not any on that map prior to like 1974. The, in, uh, in the, the 70s, they, uh, they had uh, a pet store down in the, uh, in the Caribbean that was robbed and, and broken into and several of the pigeons escaped and then he re released these Eurasian collared doves that he had in captivity. And those birds made their way to the southern tip of Florida and have been expanding ever since. And I remember when I moved to Missouri uh, in, in the 90s uh, or 92, it was, they, were, they were super rare here uh, and they've just become more common. And I know on the coast of North Carolina, when I'm down there, I hear them uh, very commonly down in that part of the world. Let's see, let's play this for you. And a lot of dove, 
fool people into thinking they're owls. Um, that, that's very commonly that it occurs, and even morning doves think that and people will say they thought they were hearing an owl. That's one that actually even kind of has an owl pattern to it. Um, but they are they're larger, they're more pigeon sized than they are dove sized, and they do have that black ring around their neck. And like I said, they are becoming far and far more common, and they have spread all the way across the the U.S. Now, they're uh, so Eurasian collared dove, uh, still not as common as is is morning dove in most places, but they're they're certainly gaining in um, in, in number. So, and the, a, a bird of the high elevation, and actually a native uh, a pigeon to this country. Uh, the band tail pigeon is a, 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 a hefty bird with the yellow bill, but they are higher up typically in, in uh, the, the mountain areas. Uh, I know we've seen them in Arizona. I know we've seen them in California. We've seen them in, 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 in Colorado, places like that. So you guys who live in that part of the world may uh, know that um, that bird better than, than, than even I because I have only seen them a handful of times um, over the years. This is their call. <laughs> deep, deep throaty, deep, deep throaty call. Uh, and, and uh, you know, it, it's, that's a fun bird. I don't know how common you get them at, at bird feeders. I don't think they're very typical for that part of, for that world. And two other native pigeons that uh, really do just occur on the fringes. This uh, the red billed pigeon. The top bird here is a, a Mexican species that occurs just along the Rio Grande, and I mean right just along the Rio Grande River down there. This was taken at Rio Grande State Park um, several years ago on a birding trip of ours. And then the white crown pigeon, which is uh, on the right, is just the Florida Keys. Now, you saw them in, in uh, Cozumel, and you saw them in Jamaica, and, and you know the Caribbean, all throughout that region. But in the U.S., you want to see a white crown pigeon, you really need to go to uh, the Florida Keys, uh, way down there. So, uh, just two very unique native pigeons that are uh, you have a chance to see in this country. But more famously, when it comes to the name pigeon. Uh, we know these guys. These are domestic rock pigeons. They used to be called rock doves if you have an old field guide, but these are just domestic pigeons. And they're very colorful, and uh, this is a, a rare sight, you know, a picture taken in the wild versus on a statue in Central Park and, and in cities, And uh, but they are uh, very well known and not liked by a lot of people. But uh, they are part of the world. They are here to stay in this country. So the rock pigeon uh, is an example. The Like I said, the, the, the north end, the high, the big end of the spectrum, they're pretty large pigeons. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, the morning doves are the medium size. And then the, the common ground doves, doves are the really small sparrow size pigeons. So it, they're, in a, they're a varied group, very fascinating and fun. Uh, you know, people love them uh, and their feeders and they want to attract them. So they're feeding just about anything. I think safflower is their favorite, but, uh, you know, almost anything you put out for them and on the ground, uh, you can you can entertain your pigeons and or doves that you want to attract. So. That's a great family focus. Thanks for that suggestion. And uh, if you want me to talk about another family group of birds, send it in. Let me know. Uh, if you haven't yet, please like, give us a, a, a thumbs up, a, a, a subscribe if you haven't already on YouTube. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.